welcome back everyone today we are going to learn how we can do a batch render inside of maya this was actually a request by rg tech he wanted to know how we can do a batch render and uh, before getting into it i just want to say that batch render was specifically designed for maya software and hardware so it does not work very well with arnold but for Anur, they have created a specific kind of render engine inside of Maya and which is just a simple basic rendering sequence kind of thing which is pretty straightforward and easy to use than Bash Render and we'll get into that. So before that I just want to show you the overall scene I have here. I've just made a pretty basic uh, quick little animation I have so we can do a rendering and if I show you this is what it looks like. Right? So pretty easy to use, pretty simple and basic animation I have here and this is what it looks like so before rendering there's something that you need to know so go to render settings and since we are not actually rendering a single image we are rendering a sequence we have to change the overall extension we have on this that means uh, first thing we have the image format if you want to use tiff for the compositing purpose you can use tiff if you want to use exr you can use it or you can go with jpeg or png so let's name this quick animation and apart from that uh, the next thing we have is the color space you can pretty much use the raw if you want to work on the camera raw and so on but apart from that the main thing is this the frame animation extension this is what matters when you're rendering a sequence and if you don't have any idea there will be an image on your screen right now that will explain everything and this is just uh, explaining how you can use name means the overall name of your project and the overall hashtag you can say is the overall amount of zeros and so on and then you have the extension by extension i mean the image format you have like for example tiff targa and so on or jpeg or png and so on so I'm, i always use this one i don't know why uh, it's kind of pretty easy to use and then you have the frame padding you have that means the amount of zeros you are going to have so you can use three four five it totally depends how much you have right now we have three digits but I'm going to keep it to 4. You can also minimize it to 3. Let's keep it 3. And then you have the overall frame range. As you can see, this was completely grayed out when you are using a single frame extension because you are not rendering multiple frames. You are rendering a single frame. So when you change the overall extension, you get this option. That means you can now render multiple images. So I'm going to change the end frame to 120. As you can see, I have 120 frames as my last frame. So this amount of from frame 0 to 120 it will be rendered completely so the next thing is your renderable camera i'm going to switch to my main camera which is the camera i'm using right now not the perspective one and uh, that's it from here at least for this menu apart from that if you want to use aov you don't have to get into the overall aov right now i'm going to make a separate video on this but if you are using aov you can use the Arnold render engine to export the AOVs with the sequence as well so that's pretty good actually for the compositor at least and uh, the next thing is now we are good to go for the rendering part so switch your overall menu from modeling to rendering now as you can see we have a new tab here called render so click on this and if I click on this batch render as you can see we get this error which is which says the render Arnold does not provide the batch render options so you can go to the overall rendering and you have the render sequence here click on the option little box to open the overall option menu and here as you can see the current camera is perspective which i do not want i want the main camera which as you can see i have right here so the next thing is you can use the you have a couple of options like render all layers and cameras and so on if you want to use that i don't think anyone will use that but you have Apart from that, the main thing is the overall folder. This is the folder where the sequence will be rendered. So you can click on the folder. As you can see, I have a folder created here, which is sequence one and sequence two. So I have two sequences here. I'm going to go into the sequence one and I'm going to type the overall name to something like, uh, I don't actually have to type the name over here. Actually, I have to type it over here, right about there. So let's call this quick only. And I messed up there. So I think the overall naming is done. So you can go back to the rendering sequence and you have the render sequence and render sequence and close. So I'm going to go with the render sequence here. I'm going to click on this and now the rendering has begun. And now it will kind of slowly render the overall images, one frame, two frame, three frame and keep on going. Now, as you can see, the rendering is going on. So if I get into the folder over here, 
which is this one as you can see the sequence one and it's kind of rendering the overall sequence so you have frame one frame two frame three frame four and continuously rendering and for the extension as you can see you have one zero two zero and then you have the frame one so as you can see the extension we choose was three the frame padding we choose was three so that's why it's giving us three digits and uh, if you go to the properties you have the overall resolution here which is the 1k i've chosen for the overall images because i wanted to make the overall video pretty quick so yeah as you can see the rendering is going on here so this is how you can use the overall render sequence to render your overall animations you have on your maya to export anything and apart from that if you want to you can use a layer setup you can create and let's call this AO and we'll create a collection and let's use plane sphere and this and let's add this and i'm going to create a shader override and let's use where is it ambient occlusion and let's use a sample of five let's see this for now and i'm going to turn this on So as you can see we have something like this and I'm just going to go to my overall HDR and I'm going to turn this off just for now and uh, go to the layer setup again go to the overall material and I'm going to control the overall effect I have on this all right so as you can see I've created this kind of toony black and white kind of image sequence which is pretty great and from here you can see a kind of a sellout animation going on right so I'm going to render this sellout animation from here. I'm going to go to the overall sequence here, go back to the folder and I'm going to change the overall folder to this, select this and uh, let's go back to this and I'm going to call this AO and let's render this. And one thing to keep in mind, since I click on the render current frame window, this does not render the overall sequence. As you can see, if I click on this, this will only render a single frame. So don't make this mistake. What you have to do is go to render and click on the render sequence and this will render the overall sequence here. So if I go back to the folder now and let's see the sequence, I have the EO folder and as you can see, it has started to render the overall sequence here, which then I can bring back to the overall compositing software and then I can compile this together. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I answered all the questions you have regarding the overall sequence. A rendering sequence with Arnold is pretty easy to use. All you have to, you just have to keep few things in mind. The first thing is the extension and make sure you choose the right amount of frame padding. If you have like a thousand frame, hundred frames or even depends on how much animations you have, make sure you have the right amount of frame padding you have whether it's million or trillion apart from that uh, the rendering sequence make sure you choose the overall camera you have for the rendering purpose and then you just have to choose the overall location and from that you're good to go and one thing if you have the right amount of frame like for example if you have 200 frames right about there make sure you choose and change the overall frame range on the end frame as well apart from that the rest is pretty good and don't use the overall render current frame here because it will only render one image only. So always use a render sequence and that's it. So if you have any question, feel free to ask me and uh, I'm going to turn this off now. All right, so, so this was pretty a basic animation just to show how this overall rendering sequence work. And let me just make the intensity one. Apart from that, it's pretty easy to use. And if you do have any question, feel free to ask me. I'll be happy to answer any doubts or questions you have and enjoy.